Tempo matters and the truth is, is most people either don't know how to use it or don't pay attention to it and coach it at all. And when I'm talking about tempo, I'm talking about the speed of execution, the speed of our exercises. And if you guys have been following our videos here on the YouTube channel, no doubt you've probably come across our video on the OPT model where we talk a little bit about training tempos. And for most people who go through, especially the NASM curriculum or even other training certifications, they may understand tempos for certain styles of training, but not all of it. So in this video, what I wanna do is I just wanna break down, not only for exam purposes, but also for application, what speed of execution, how quickly should someone be moving when they go through an exercise based upon the goal. And this stuff really matters because if we're not executing exercises with the right tempo, with the right speeds to match the reps, the sets, all the variables that we're coaching them on, they might not actually be getting the benefit that we're looking for, right? So as a coach and a trainer, I know you want them to get the right benefit. So let's jump right into this. The first piece, right, phase one here, especially of our OPT model, we talk about stabilization endurance. This is probably the tempo that most of you guys are actually the most familiar with because if you've gone through the NSM curriculum, you know this super slow 4 to one tempo is like kind of hammered into you inside of those programming chapters. And again, we talk about it in a lot of our videos as well. That four second eccentric slow control down, two second isometric at the end range, one second concentric, and then one second pause potentially at the top. So just making sure that you guys know how to read tempo is valuable because even if you guys go consume information beyond NASM's textbook and you get into programming and training, this is how tempo will commonly be written with these four numbers. Again, four second is usually your eccentric. This is gonna be the potential, doesn't have to be an isometric. Then you have your concentric, and then again, another potential for isometric at the top. All right, so four, two, one. Big benefits there, right? Probably not new to you guys. As we slow things down, it literally gives us an opportunity as coaches to make corrections. From the motor learning standpoint, right? The brain, the neurological learning portion of exercise for clients, it also gives them the opportunity to just solidify the pathways, right? Making sure they're stabilized in the right positions. We're getting isometrics at the bottom, right? So big benefit there, but 421 tempo, probably the one that's most familiar for you guys. Now, I do wanna say something, because I get questions on this a lot, even inside of our in-person courses, which is like, Joe, do you count the entire thing, right? For 12 reps, am I there counting? Four, three, two, one, one, two, one, one, no, of course I'm not counting it like that. Now, am I gonna do that in the beginning? Yeah, I probably will, maybe for a couple of reps. And the reason I think it's important because as you work with clients or even you start to pay attention to yourself in the gym, if you're not coaching speed, people will just start to move at whatever speed they want to. And oftentimes it's gonna be too fast. The most common thing you're gonna do with clients, especially in the beginning, is gonna be slowing them down. And it won't just be once, right? Clients that you've worked with for a long period of time, you have to reinforce. That's a lot of what coaching is as well. You have to be okay with the fact that you're not gonna say something once. You're not gonna tell them, hey, I just want you to go four seconds down, pause at the bottom for two seconds, come up and then pause again at the top. They're gonna forget it after the second rep. So right? you're gonna have to reinforce it. But I do like the idea of not counting the entire set for any of these things because I also want them, right? I gotta give them a little bit of a leash. I gotta allow them to learn and understand what the tempo is like. And if all of a sudden after the third and the fourth rep, they start getting off this tempo, I'm gonna jump back in, right? I'm gonna say, we gotta slow it down on the way down, slow it back down. I might count a rep out for them. But for me, I'm not gonna sit there and count the entire 12 reps. It's gonna be a really awkward, weird session, right? And I'm sure you don't want to either. So count it out in your head, keep people to it. The last thing I'll say on this, especially with phase one, is that even if it's not perfect, even if it's three seconds instead of four, the idea, we wanna slow the eccentrics down, we wanna add some purposeful isometrics at the bottom position of whatever exercise it might be, and then we wanna have a normal concentric. That's my takeaway from it. I think if you apply it that way, all of a sudden, it's easier to coach into a lot of exercises. So that's our phase one. And then it becomes like, okay, Joe, I know inside the material, NASM says it's a mixed tempo. What does that mean? As we move into, we moved out of stabilization endurance, now into strength endurance. First off, I'll say that's not the only way that they describe in here. It's not the only way that you can train strength endurance, but now we're actually combining tempo. So NASM gives you guys a suggested superset style of trying to solidify some of this stuff. And what happens 
is all of a sudden, just to give you guys an example, we take a compound movement, maybe a bilateral movement like a squat or a chest press, something that's gonna be more stable, a more stable version we can start to move load with. And you're gonna do more endurance reps, 12 to 15 repetitions. But initially for that first exercise, our tempo does change now. I'm gonna give you guys here two, one, two, one. So now instead of four seconds down, it's still controlled, but maybe now it's one, two, one, one, two, one. You can see there's still some pauses that are happening there, but the reps start to speed up a little bit. It's still two seconds, it's still very controlled. That would be how you would do the first exercise. They recommend you doing a stable to an unstable superset. So if I was doing that bilateral goblet squat at that two, one, two tempo for 12 reps, I'd set that down and then I'd go right into an unstable version. Maybe something like a body weight step up. Something that I could go back and maintain, because that's the key variable here, is I kind of go back to this first tempo that we came across. My second exercise is supposed to be more stabilization challenging, often tied to something single leg. So I'm gonna choose an exercise that I can maintain now that four second eccentric tempo. All right, so that is how NASM suggests doing it. It's not the only way to train someone inside of stabilization endurance, or sorry, strength endurance. Even for a lot of people, if you just keep things relatively controlled, even if I didn't do a superset, but let's say I was doing like a static lunge and I'm transitioning out of the 4-2-1 tempo now to a 2-1-2 tempo, the good thing is, is I'm gonna be able to start to handle a little bit more load. I'm still working some of that stabilization, but either way, that's what they're talking about when they talk about a mixed tempo, is that the superset, exercise to exercise, it's actually a different speed, right? So if you're not thinking about and coaching these things, you may be missing out on some of the benefit for the client in progressing them through these OPT model phases. So from there, phase three, you guys can see, I put a star here because as you look at tempo for muscular development training, and again, I wanna to talk to you guys beyond just the NASM curriculum. Tempos vary widely, right? Muscular development and hypertrophy, as it's often called, can happen at a lot of speeds, right? You could be getting some hypertrophy benefit here. You could be getting some hypertrophy benefit here, right? It can happen at endurance to strength phases. A lot of it ends up actually being about the intensity in which you're training. Are you training close to failure? But I'll say probably the safest way to start to transition your tempos for people in muscular development is to start to remove the isometric. If we've done a good job of building stability with our isometric pauses at end range in these first two phases, then we can safely say, all right, let's now start creating more mechanical overload and even more consistent tempo. If you guys read other research out there on muscular development, one effective way of looking at trying to you know, encourage hypertrophy is time under tension. And so when I'm coaching clients in muscular development with this 202 tempo, I try to get them to picture, picture if you were like a robot, like a buff little robot sent back from the future. No, like a, like a piston that moves at the exact same speed up and down. And it sounds silly, but it is very visual and helps a lot of people get it. Where now all of a sudden I can take, let's say that same goblet squat, doesn't have to be a different exercise, but my loads and my tempo change. And now I'm one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. And the cool thing for you guys is if you go and you play with, you could even do this in your next workout session, is go through and try the same exercise with these different tempos and you'll feel the difference, right? You'll feel the difference in the weight that you're able to handle and probably the benefit you're gonna get. And here, what's gonna happen with no pauses at the top or the bottom, we're not really giving our body an opportunity to relax from the tension, right? For example, with a goblet squat, when I'm fully locked out, I'm kind of stacked. You know, versus at the top here, I'm really never quite relaxing. I'm gonna get there and then I'm going right back in. So this extended tension for the muscles can be a great signal for hypertrophy. I also find it's a really great way, a really safe way to start coaching people with some heavier loads, all right? We don't necessarily have to have the pauses, but the key there for a lot of people, the two seconds down might not be bad, but oftentimes ugh, they wanna get up quickly and it can actually be challenging to maintain the controlled concentric, right? So that one, again, thinking like you're a little robot who's just maintaining the same speed up and down for that 2-0-2-0 tempo. Not the only way to do it, but very effective for muscular development. And then as you get into four and five, this is where it can kind of get confusing because you're like, well, I don't know. When I, when I look at the material, it just says XXX or fast and explosive. 
But if you guys watch someone do here in maximal strength, if you watch someone do a maximal strength, like one to three rep bench press or deadlift, anything heavy, they're not moving very fast, right? It's usually gonna be, you know, controlled down. And it's gonna look a little slow up. But the idea, the reason that it's either talked about as fast and explosive or X, which just means as fast as you can, is because you're not trying to move slow, you're trying to move with as much force as possible because the load is very heavy, you're just not gonna move that fast, right? The only addition that I would make here, I don't like the idea, especially with something, the eccentric component, I don't like the idea of not having a number because I still want control on the way down. Like if I'm doing a bench press, I kind of like having, let's call it a one and then X and then X, if anything, because I still don't, I don't want to just drop it down, right? Most people aren't going to be able to handle that. So I just think control down and then exploding up, just to give you guys an idea of how that might really play out working with the client. I still want that controlled eccentric. And then when it comes to phase five, true power training, XXX, fast and explosive. I'm more okay with the fact that we don't add any numbers here because a lot of the power movements that I may end up using with the client there might not really be a strong eccentric component, right? For example, if I think about a medicine ball, right? Either A, I'm just trying to explode as fast as possible. Like I don't wanna slow it down. I want rapid fire. That's really the benefit there in phase five is the rate of force production. How quickly can I generate force? Same thing with even if I'm thinking about like a, a vertical jump or a box jump. There is with a vertical jump or a box jump, there is an eccentric component, but I want all of them to be rapid. I don't wanna go slow down and then try to explode up. I want to use right the elastic elements. So as we get into phase five, you won't usually find numbers. It's just going to be something like that XXX because we want fast and explosive. So hopefully this guy's hopefully it helps you um, because again, I think oftentimes we don't use tempo either a because as we have these different goal sets, we don't necessarily know what the right way to do it is or we don't know you know, how slow should the eccentric or the concentric be, but these numbers will serve you well. Not only are these the numbers specifically for all of you guys who are out there trying to do well and pass your NSM exam, these are the numbers that are straight out of your textbook, but these are also great ones to work off of when it comes to working with clients and making sure that you're actually transitioning people from phase to phase, that after, you know, let's say this period of three to six weeks, of inside of stabilization with some of my prime moves, now I start to make some change. And the good thing about that, guys, aside from driving physical changes in their body, is the cool thing is, is now the workouts will feel drastically different. And that is really powerful for keeping clients engaged long term, is them feeling like they're making progress. And if you guys, or not if, you should, go through and train yourself in these different methods for a period of time, you'll see how different those workouts feel and oftentimes just the speed of the exercise without changing the exercise at all is gonna have a drastic impact on not just again the experience but also the results they get from it. So tempo matters, make sure you guys are using it.